Hey, Hickok here. I'm just enjoying a little 22 action on the range. 22 rimfire. Like a 22. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more fun than uh, plinking with a, a 22 rim fire. You probably thought I had never shoot anything smaller than 45 caliber or 9 millimeter sometimes because I'm always throwing big chunks of lead. But uh, 22, a lot of fun. I know that many of you enjoy them. In fact, I would venture to guess that all of us almost started it out shooting 22 rimfire back in the day and for some of you that are younger that might be what you're shooting now well uh, I guess I have a bias you know for big bore stuff but uh, I started out shooting 22 and still shoot it quite often I have some fairly interesting 22 guns uh, handguns and rifles and uh, shoot them you know quite a lot I thought I'd uh, just bring out a couple today I uh, have not done a video on 22 rimfire for whatever reason. I've had a lot of people ask me about it. So I brought out a couple today. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure you've got plenty of ammo. Now we're, I think we kind of, we only have about 5,000 rounds here. We'll maybe try not to shoot all of it today. But uh, there are 5,000 rounds in that jug. Two, two guns I'm going to feature today uh, that I will shoot. Both of them uh, are nice, nice shooters. Uh, the uh, Model 41 Smith & Wesson is uh, certainly one of the primo 22 rimfire semi-automatic pistols. Uh, if you've ever shot one of these, you know what I'm talking about. Great sights, uh, very accurate gun, inherently accurate. You know, no gun's any more accurate than the person holding it, of course. And we rarely get the accuracy out of a gun we're shooting if we're just standing and shooting it, no matter what it is. But uh, this gun will drive nails. Uh, the whole we can do it. And then uh, a revolver. Uh, this one has a little history. This happens to be a uh, Revelation. That's the brand name. Ooh, collectible, huh? I'll bet I'll get some offers of $1,000 on that gun. A Revelation bought at Western Auto. Have you ever heard of a Western Auto? Didn't know they sell guns, did you? Well, in 1960 they did, and that's when this gun was purchased. Uh, so it's made by high standard for... Uh, it was made by high standard for Western Auto, and uh, it was under the name Revelation. It has Revelation on the barrel and has a little emblem right there. Let me hold it up here a little bit where you can see a little closer. But it is a Revelation uh, made by high standard. They made this in various barrel lengths and for Western Auto. I don't know if any other outlets sold it at the time or not. I remember going into Western Auto's in the 50s and 60s and eyeballing their guns you know an auto parts store primarily but they sold guns like all hardware stores did uh, virtually at that time uh, in fact some of my old colts were shipped to hardware stores the ones i've got letters on in st louis you know so uh, that's where a lot of people bought their guns in back in the day uh, all right revolver nine shot you notice that holds a lot of bullets that's one of the cool things about it this gun is a kind of a special gun. I thought I'd bring out a, uh, an old gun that has a little bit of history and then plus a, a newer uh, gun, although this gun is not brand new. Uh, this gun was purchased. This is the first gun I ever fired. This is the first handgun I ever fired in my life. So if you wonder uh, how Hickok got addicted, this gun uh, is probably responsible. Uh, my mother bought this gun for my dad in 1960 for Christmas. We moved out to a farm. We had 50 acres. And he wanted to, had always wanted a handgun. He had had rifles and shotguns. He just never had a handgun. And uh, he'd won one, I think, since he got back from the war. So he got this for Christmas. Uh, she bought him one. It was a shorter barrel. And back then, he didn't want a short barrel. So he traded it, took it back to Western Auto, and they traded it out for him. So this was Christmas present, 1960, for my dad. And uh, I was 10, and I went out on the farm carrying this gun and shooting. The first one I ever shot terms of a handgun. It may have been even the first gun. I know. I've got the first rifle I ever fired too that he gave me. So it was either this one or that uh, rifle. 
this was definitely the first handgun, this little 22. You know, so I'd go out plinking at trees. Uh, there was an old pond back on the place, had an old car in it, turned upside down. I remember shooting the sides of that car with this gun. And that's probably what got me started shooting steel, right? <laughs> so uh, this gun, uh, of course, my father's been gone for about uh, 15 years now. So this gun uh, is pretty special. I keep it in the bank in a lockbox a lot of times, but uh, lots of times it's home too, so I can shoot it. So it has a lot of history. I've had it myself now uh, for, I guess, since around 1975, long in there. Uh, so uh, I have fired it a fair number of times. It's not a Smith & Wesson. It's not a Colt, but not, not too bad. And, of course, it wouldn't matter. I wouldn't trade it for 10 Colts or 10 Smith & Wessons. But anyway, the revolver, kind of neat because uh, it does hold nine rounds. And uh, there are some modern ones, Taurus and Smith. I don't know if Colt. I don't know if Colt makes anything like that. Maybe some other uh, revolver makers I'm not aware of. But it holds almost as many rounds as this uh, semi-automatic does. They typically hold about 10, you know, in their, their magazine. Let me load it up. Uh, and, you know, with a revolver and a 22 caliber, there's no reason for it to be chambered for just six rounds. It's a little bit of overkill. Uh, you can see, and this, this gun is worn, of course. And... It doesn't have the best trigger or the best double action, but it doesn't matter, of course. It's a gun I grew up with, so I'm going to take a few shots with it just to play with it. Still shoots. Now, I can't, I can't show you any uh, marvelous, necessarily... Uh, shooting skills with a 22 here. I just want to plink some with them and, and talk about the 22s and, uh, and these two particular guns. And uh, we all know there are so many interesting models out there, particularly in rifles, but uh, these are two of uh, the common types of handguns. Take a couple more here. Let's go out there pretty far to 80, 80 and see if, uh, if it'll hold a round that far away. There we go. <laughs> Oops, quick, quick. So, still operational, still works fine, double action uh, revolver. And, uh, neat old gun. Uh, you can imagine what kind of prize gun that is for me. That's one of the first guns my son fired. Uh, it's just uh, a lot of history. And I have the original holster. This is the holster that uh, my dad got for it when he bought it, uh, probably at Western Auto. You know, it fits. Uh, it may have been the holster designed for it. I, I don't really know for sure. Uh, I'm not sure who makes it. I don't see a maker on it. But neat old gun action open all right now this gun semi-automatic is uh, really nice I was uh, messing around back in the 80s uh, got into a little little competition some people were having up the road a ways and it was the first time I'd ever done that before and they were shooting some uh, 22s and then some big bore stuff at various steel targets and uh, they had a 22 class or a 22. Actually, you had to shoot 22. That was one of the events. You had to have a 22 pistol. And I borrowed somebody's a couple of different times. And one time I borrowed one of these from somebody. I thought, whoa, that is nice. And so uh, I traded, I think I traded a Beretta 92 for it, I believe, if I re recall correctly. But that was back in the 80s. And so I've had this a long time. Nice gun. It does have the target grips. It's a you know, target gun, of course, which is what most 22s are, are for. So, sweet little gun. I've got magazines for it. Uh, I think I have four mags here. And uh, they, uh, the magazines were extremely expensive. I know when I got this gun, I think it was the only gun that took these magazines. Since then, Smith has built a couple other models, I believe, to take that same, I think one of these magazines on the ground over here. Since then, uh, 
they have made another model, at least one, that takes the same magazine and they're, and they're not quite as expensive. At the time it seemed expensive, they were like $30 or something, and that's back in the days when all magazines were like 10 or 12. But, uh, I'll load up a couple more here. And uh, maybe send it through its paces again. And one of the neat things about this gun, if you've never fired one or shot one, is the way it breaks down. And it's easy to clean. As you know, if you've ever had a 22 automatic pistol, they, uh, they can get dirty pretty quickly, and some of them last longer than others. But all of them with this dirty 22 ammo uh, start hanging up at some point and you get them dirty enough. Uh, that's one of the things I like about this. Now I have had the uh, 22, let's see, the Ruger Mark IV Hunter, and uh, those are great guns. The Ruger makes some wonderful 22 pistols. Uh, a friend of mine has the Buckmark, the Browning Buckmark, and it seems like a great pistol. Some of y'all, I'm sure, have the, both of those guns, one or the other. And uh, there are others. So I think Walther makes a pretty neat one now. There's just a lot of nice, nice guns out there in 22 caliber. Like I say, one thing I like about this one, and it's clear, is the way it breaks down. That was the reason I didn't like the Ruger too much. It was really uh, a strange bird to break down. You pull down on the trigger guard, like that, and barrel just lifts right off so you can see how easy that would be to clean and you can also get barrels of different lengths for it this one I think is seven six or seven inches long but you can get shorter barrels and maybe even a longer one I'm not sure then you just pull the action back and and uh, lift it up and it's gone so it's really really simple to clean nice uh, nice design Smith & Wesson model 41 all right They've gotten really, really expensive. It wasn't cheap when I traded for it, but uh, they've really gotten expensive now. But nice gun. So I think I say that about everything I shoot on it. Let's uh, let's send a few rounds down range here with this. Woo! See what we can hit or not or miss. Let's try that can there. some uh, play pigeons not sure where to hold I haven't shot this in so long let me put it on steel see where I need to hold I'm gonna go on that first plate there hold right in the middle ah. I think I see the problem I'm shooting high I think Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Need to hold under the target. I think I might need to do some side adjustment on this before I shoot it again. It's interesting, they don't shatter like they used to, the old clay pigeons. Let's go across the range a little bit, uh, stretch it out a little bit. Now you won't be able to tell what I'm hitting probably, because uh, I don't know if anything over there is going to fall. I may try for one of those 8 inch plates over there on the on those uh, posts, that one on the right maybe, see if I can hit that. There we go. for 80. <laughs> ah, sweet, sweet. Nice gun. Uh, I'll load up a couple more. But, uh, get some more of this ammo here. Now this is Federal. This is the, the Walmart ammo that when you can find it in bulk, it's priced pretty well. Uh, I have bought a lot of the Remington. I will, uh, you know, I'm I'm not hesitant to brag on something that works, that I like, as you know. 
And I'll have to say, I'm going to slam Remington ammo a little bit. It, you may have a different experience. In fact, I saw a posting on one of the gun forums where somebody was uh, having just the opposite experience, in fact. But uh, I've had a bad experience with that uh, Remington gold, whatever it is. Uh, no matter what we're firing that stuff in, it seems to about one out of nine or ten rounds wants to misfire or not fire. But we haven't experienced that as much with the Federal. Don't know. Now in a rifle, especially the lever guns, got a lever gun, 22. Uh, they seem to do okay for the most part, although occasionally they still malfunction. And in a semi-automatic Ruger 22, different guns, uh, we, we've just had some trouble with that Remington stuff. But the Federal seems much more reliable. Uh, it's not a big deal, you know. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be guarding the home front with a 22 long rifle cartridge, but uh, it is a little bit annoying if it doesn't work. So, and I've noticed the 22 ammo seems to be getting back on the market a little bit better. I know the Walmart here near where I live, they have boxes of this stuff. So hopefully that shortage is about run its course. One thing I like about this gun is it just has such a sweet trigger. I'm going to try to shoot uh, fast with it here a couple of times. Nope, we had a hang up. After I bragged on it. That's something you have to deal with with a 22, isn't it? Yeah. You're just going to get hang ups every now and then. 22 long rifle. <laughs> Try it again. See, there's a little selector switch here for four auto on the side of this gun. And uh, occasionally I'll, I'll push it down and uh, let it go full auto. Let's do it again. Here we go. Uh, it doesn't like full otters today, does it? It has to hang up a little bit. There we go. We got a couple more. I'll fire these last four or five. Let's go over there to Buffalo. All right. So even with a 22. Uh, of course, none of those things over there much are going to fall with the 22, unless you set them so they're just barely standing there. But you can tell, still tell with steel targets when you hit them. That's kind of kind of nice. You get a reaction. You get the sound at least. The plates don't swing much. You know, nothing moves around a lot. But uh, nothing like a good old 22 uh, for fun. You know, inexpensive, uh, fairly inexpensive. Uh, not as hard on the ears. Uh, yeah, not. Not much you can argue with or complain about with a 22 long rifle. Hopefully, if you shoot a lot of big bore and you like the big stuff like I do, you also have a, a little place in your heart for these old 22 long rifle guns because there, there are some pretty neat guns in in 22 uh, long rifle. And I'm probably not telling you anything. Most of you don't already know about these guns. But there's so many of them available, uh, and a lot of you probably are shooting 22s more than, uh, than other things uh, right now. I know with the cost of ammo, if you don't hand load, the 22 especially becomes uh, pretty attractive, doesn't it? So anyway, that's my little uh, experience with 22s, and I'm glad y'all could come out to the range today. We'll, on another date, bring out uh, some other different 22s, some rifles and things that, that you might enjoy seeing. So thanks for coming out, and we'll talk to you later.